Have a look at the sketch. Drop shoulders. Turn down collar. Waistband. It will be stitched to the blouse. The waistband should be doubled. Let's have a look at the back. There will also be a waistband at the back. The waistband will be simply stitched to the back and it will turn into a bow on the front. This is how it is going to look like when the bow is untied. Let's have a close look at the sketch once again. The wrap over should be edged with the facing details. It can be lined with cambric. We often line such light summer clothes with cambric. If you double the facing and the collar with the interfacing material, if you make accurate shoulders and a beautiful bow, the blouse will be gorgeous. It won't look cheap, even though it's made on the basis of such simple pattern. The high-quality garments always look expensive, even if they are simple. Nowadays, people give us a lot of advice on how to look like you're dressed expensive. You do not have to spend a lot of money for it. Just sew and wear high-quality clothes. Heavily here. Each of the chest there should be moved to the waist and divided in two. It should be done in order to avoid making such sharp angles. Have a close look at this one. I've already showed you how to move the darts a lot of times. You know that it's not hard to do it. There will also be two pin tucks under the waistband on each side of the center front. I want the bottom of the blouse to be slightly gathered, even though it looks differently in the sketch. I remind you that this blouse will be made on the basis of the pattern for the garments with the drop shoulders. First, I need to draw the pin tucks and the darts. After that, I'll make the waistband and the collar. Let's start working. I'm going to make a collar when the garment is tacked. This is the only way to make an accurate collar. There is going to be a wrap over in the front. The lower detail will be attached to the upper one with the bottom. There will be a bow on the waistband. It will be about 60 or 70 centimeters long down from this point. I know that such simple garments of the knit fabrics are very comfortable. I love them too. The worst thing about them is that you stop thinking about the way you look and act like. I always say that garments with the belts make you look much slimmer, improve your posture and make you look taller than you really are. Such garments don't look baggy. Don't be lazy. It's very easy to wear comfortable clothes. Sometimes it's better to sacrifice convenience for beauty. I really hope that you like the design. I'm sure that such blouses can help us be different and beautiful. Even if you are not planning to sew such blouses, I'm sure that you'll find something useful in these videos. I want you to learn to work with the mock-ups. Have a look at mine. I remind you that a mock-up is not an actual garment. I drew all the lines with the marker pen right on it. There is a line on the center front. I need to cut it first. I also need to cut the center back. I'll cut it this way. I don't need the seam extension anymore. I had made a mock-up and tried it on. After that, I cut the center front and the center back seams, so that I have two separate details. I'll be working with this half of the mock-up. I'm not going to throw the second detail away. It can be used for making many more different garments. It's very convenient to work this way. If you have a mock-up, it would take you just about half an hour to prepare a garment cut on its basis for stitching. I'm going to work just with one half of the mock-up now, so I can move the second detail aside. I 
I showed you the way the mock-up fits me. Watch the videos on how to make patterns for the garments with the drop shoulders if you haven't done it yet. What do we have here? This is a half of my mock-up. I want to outline the waistline. First, I need to draw and cut the waistband. I need to do it before removing the taking from the tucks. Watch what I'm doing. I'm going to draw a waistband with the use of a ruler. I need to put the mark 2.5 cm right on the line and mark 2.5 cm on each side of the line. By doing so, I'm going to draw a 5 cm wide waistband. Two point five centimeters, two point five centimeters, two point five centimeters. This is the back. I'll outline the drawn detail with a marker pen. This is the center back. I wanted to understand that reading about sewing is different from the actual sewing process. 2.5 cm, 2.5 cm. That gives 5 cm in total. This is the front. I need to mark and sign the center front as well. As I've already said, the center front should be signed. Do not forget to mark it. This is very important. When I start cutting the waistband, the seams will break. In order to avoid it, I'll stick the seams with the sticky tape. I'll also mark the upper and the lower parts of the waistband. The only thing left to be done is to add some here for the wrap over and a bow. That's it. I also need to sign the sides, the center back, and the center front in the lower detail. I show you the most simple techniques. I prefer to work fast and easy. The best thing about this technique is that even if I make mistake in this detail, I still have the second part of the mock-up. I can make many more mock-ups on its basis. This is the center back detail and the center back. This is the front detail. This is the side seam. I signed everything, so I'm not going to make mistakes. The tucks and the waistband attacked. We can continue working now. I've forgotten to sign this detail. The center back. The center front. The upper side, the lower side, the upper side, the lower side. This is the side seam. That's it. Don't be lazy. I can move this detail aside now. I'll be working with the upper part of the bodies. The shoulder dots shouldn't be changed. They're perfect. I'm going to cut the extra details from them. I'm going to cut the extra details from them. 
I'll actually cut the extra details from all darts and tucks. Don't be afraid of doing it. Very nice. Do the same thing in the front detail. Let's continue working. This is how the upper part of the body looks like now. We need to turn it into the detail which we see in the sketch. How to do it? First I need to move the chest dart, and then I need to make a wrap over. I remind you that the wrap over will be doubled with facing. This is the center front. First I need to make the edge of the fabric straight. It's very important to do it. This is the upper detail of the front. I need to draw the waistline. I'm going to draw it one centimeter lower because I want to add one centimeter extension for these. This is the waistline. Next, I need to add 13 centimeters to the center front. You can add 12 cm, or even 11 cm if you are slim. You can make a wide wrap over. I'm not going to do it, because I don't want the bow to be on the side. I want it to be placed on the front. This is why I added 13 cm for the wrap over to the center front. Next, I need to draw the center front itself. I'll sign it. After that, I need to pin the center front of the mock-up to the drawn line. I hope that everything is clear so far. There is nothing complicated in this technique. I need to pin the upper part of this detail. I'll be working with the lower part of it. I remind you that the extensions for the shoulder and the side seams are already included in the pattern. Be very attentive. Do not forget to pay attention to such details. Let's move on to working with the dart. I need to cut this part and close the original chest dart. Have a look at this opening. These are the waist and the chest darts together. Just imagine how inconvenient it would be to iron this angle. This is why the dart should be divided in two. I want everything to be perfect. Watch what I'm doing next. This part can also be pinned now. Be very attentive. I'm showing you everything very thoroughly. Have a look here. This is where the dart top is now. It should be moved 1.5 cm lower. I'm doing it for the dart to be more beautiful. Next, I need to draw the second dart here. It should be perpendicular to the waistline. To do that, I need to draw a line at the right angle towards it. Be very attentive. I'll draw it 3.5 cm away from the first dart. I remind you that the first dart ends not here, but 1.5 cm lower. In order not to make mistakes, I'm going to stick the original dart with the sticky tape. A pattern should be accurate. It's very convenient to work with the mock-ups. I'm not afraid of making mistakes, because I know that I have the second half of the mock-up. What should I do next? 
This point was moved 1.5 cm down from the bus stop. The second dart was drawn 3.5 cm away from the original one. I can start cutting it now. Stop cutting about 5 mm down from this point. I cut the line. You can see that there is no opening here. To make an opening, I need to make a cut here as well. I'll make the opening about 2.5 cm wide. You can make it as wide as you want. I need to outline the darts next. I remind you that the mock-up serves as a pattern. These two darts shouldn't be even. The second dart should always be smaller. Have a close look here. I made a tiny opening here in order to make the second dart. Ignore it. There shouldn't be any opening here. What is also important is that the second dart should be a bit shorter than the first one. I don't know why, but some people decided that this was not a mock-up, but an actual blouse. I've outlined the darts. Next, I need to trace all the other details. It takes just about five minutes to move the dart, divide it in two, and outline the details. I can detach the pattern and throw it away. I remind you that I still have the second half of the mock-up. I'm showing you a lot of useful techniques in these videos. I've detached the pattern. These are the darts. This is the waistline. It looks this way due to the fact that there are two darts here. You know that I'm not good at drawing. The side seam, the armhole, I'm much better at cutting than I am at drawing. This is the shoulder seam. I remind you that I'm making a garment with the drop shoulders. Let's have a look at the front neckline. This is where it should end. Draw a smooth, beautiful line up from this point. Notice that this part of the front neckline isn't round anymore. Have a look at this point. This is where the center front and the front neckline cross. Notice that the original round neckline and the new straight one match in this point. I changed the shape of the front neckline, but I didn't want to change its depth. I couldn't make this part of the front neckline round and the lower part straight. This is why I drew a beautiful smooth line. I need to make spacing seams on the center front in the both front details. The upper part of the front is ready. I need to cut it and move it aside. When it's done, I'll move on to working with the next details. I remind you that the seam extensions were included in the pattern. When I cut the blouse, I'll show you how it should look like. I don't need to add the seam extension here either. The only thing I want to change is the bottom of this detail. I want to add one centimeter extension for the ease here. 
Notice that the extension ends on the level of the first dart opening. I did it for the fabric not to be stretched. Do not forget to add 1 cm seam extension when cutting this detail. This is the upper detail of the front. Here are the wrap over, the darts and the center front. The best thing about the back detail is that it can be cut without any changes. Do not forget to add the seam extension to the center back. I also need to add one centimeter seam extension to the bottom of this detail. You can make a lot of different garments on the basis of this pattern. Make a mock-up and try adjusting it to different garments and designs. Let's check if the side seams are even. They are. It's just that one is straight and the other isn't. I'll cut just a couple of millimeters here. Perfect. Do not forget to check if the side seams are even. This is very important. I need to outline the dart, the waist dart. And the shoulder dart. These are the front and the back details of the upper part of the front. Here we continue working with the blouse with the drop shoulders. This is the lower detail of the pattern. First, I want to make it about 5 cm longer. To do that, I need to pin the center back to a fold. Be very attentive. I want to cut the extra piece from the dart. This is how the lower part of the back detail looks like now. I remind you that there will be two pin tucks here under the waistband. I want the opening in each of the pin tucks to be 4 cm wide. I'm showing you everything very thoroughly for you not to have any questions left. I want the lower part of the blouse to be white and gathered. You can make it as white as you want. You do not necessarily have to make the pin tucks. You can also make the blouses as long as you want. I'm making the openings 4 cm wide. Make them as wide as you want. Next, I need to make the second opening here. It will also be 4 cm wide. I also want to make the lower part of the blouse 5 cm longer both in the front and the back details. I remind you that this is the center back.
Guys, do you realize how lucky you are? There was no YouTube when I was learning to sew. I eagerly share my knowledge with you. Some of the techniques which I show you took years to be created. Do not forget to make a notch on the center back. I need to make two pin tucks here, 4 cm wide each. I need to mark the openings with the notches. Next, I need to pin the waistband detail to the fabric. The center back should be pinned to the fold. I need to add 1 cm extension to each side. It's so convenient to work with all the sides and details assigned. Do not forget about the seam extensions. This is the center back. When the pin tucks are stitched, these details will be even. This is how they are going to look like. Perfect. Next, I need to cut the lower details for the front. After that, I move on to making the bow. This is how the back is going to look like. Notice that all the details match perfectly when the pin tucks and the darts are closed. I can move the back aside. It's ready for taking. I'll be working with the lower part of the front next. I remind you that I made the lower part of the back 5 cm longer. What do I need to do? I need to add 14 cm to the center front. Do not forget about 1 cm seam extension. This is the center front. The line I'm rowing now is also the center front. I'll sign the line. The center front. Next, I need to pin the center front of the lower part of the front right to the drawn line. I'm going to make two pin tags here as well. I need to cut the extra piece from the dart. The openings and the pin tucks on the front will also be 4 cm wide. I made an accurate opening by side. Be very attentive when pinning the details. The direction of the edges should match. The distance between the pin tucks and the lower detail should be even to the distance between the darts and the upper details. Three point five centimeters. Next, I need to cut an opening here and make it four centimeters wide. The pin tucks on the front will match the dart. These openings should be four centimeters wide as well. I need to pin these details now. They should be made 5 cm longer as well. You can change the design however you want. Don't be afraid of working with patterns. Все. 
I made the detail 5 cm longer and added 14 cm to the center front. Be very attentive. I remind you that I made the detail 5 cm longer and added 14 cm to the center front. I wanted to understand how the front should look like. These two doors should be stitched. They are accurate. They will fit the body perfectly. The pin tucks will be stitched this way as well. You do not necessarily have to make the pin tucks. You can make regular waist tucks here. Notice that the details match. The only detail left to be made is the waistband for the front. I want to make the edge and the lower details bias, just like it looked like in the sketch. I'll cut it this way first, and then I'll decide if I want to make it more biased. As I've already said, the only detail left to be made is the baseband for the front. I remind you that there will be a bow on the front. The waistband for the front will consist of the four separate details. The bow will be inserted right in the side seam. I'll show you what to do. This is the waistband detail from the pattern. I need to add 14 cm to it. This is going to be the left detail of the front waistband. The right detail will be made wider right from this point. Be very attentive. I want to stitch about to the waistband details. I'm not going to make the waistband just of the two details. It would be pretty hard to do it. I'm going to make a regular waistband in the blouse, and then I'm going to attach about it. The seams won't be seen when the bow is tied. Let's start working with the waistband. Have a look at the sketch once again. As I've just said, there will be a seam here on the waistband. It would be hard for you to make the bows any other way. First, I need to cut the details, which will be inserted in the front, and then the details for the bow. When it's done, I'll show you how to make a collar. This is the center front. I need to pin the center front of the waistband to it. This is the front waistband detail, which was cut from the mock-up. It's so convenient to work when all the edges and sides are signed in advance. I'll take the waistband to the garment first, and then I'll move on to cutting the bow and the collar.
Do not forget to make notches on the center front. We continue working with the blouse made on the basis of the pattern for the garments with the drop shoulders. First, I need to trace the darts to the other side. Notice that I've made the space and seams on the center front in these details. I made them in all the details. When I take these details, I show you how to make a bow and a collar. After that, I'll try the blouse on. I remind you that I made two darts instead of one. I did it for the dart tops to be not that sharp. It wouldn't be convenient to stitch and iron them otherwise. I'm not using a ruler to draw the darts, because they are not absolutely straight. Due to the fact that they are slightly round, they will make the blouse fit the body perfectly. That's it. I trace the darts, so I can start taking them. One of the tailors of my fashion house is taking the back of the camera. I recommend you making notches here. The notches should be tiny. Have a look at what I'm doing. It should be done for you to take the darts accurately. This is how the tech darts look like. Their tops are soft, they are not sharp. I recommend you using this technique for making the darts more beautiful. I need to take the darts in the second detail as well. It's very convenient to learn to work with the dart. Have a close look at the dart top. It's not sharp. The darts are ready. Next, I need to take the waistband and the lower part of the blouse. This is how the blouse is going to look like. There will be two pin tags here in the lower detail. First, I need to take the waistband to the upper detail of the front. Match the space and seams on the center front to do it. I hope that everything is clear so far. I'm showing you everything very thoroughly. How to divide the front and the back into the details. How to move the darts. How to make a waistband. How to make the accurate seams on the center front. If you do everything the way I show you, you won't have any problems. I show you all the details and technique very thoroughly. Notice that the details match perfectly. If you work accurately, they will always match. I'll take the second front detail of the camera. I remind you that I'm making a mock-up. You should double the waistband with the interfacing material before taking it. When the waistband is doubled, it will be very strong. I'm taking the seam to the wrong side, for the blouse to fit me better at a fitting. Don't be lazy. 
It doesn't take long to take the blouse. Just be accurate and attentive when doing it. Next, I need to pin the pin tags according to the notches. Very nice. Next, I need to take the lower part of the front to the waistband. I know that the design seemed pretty complicated in the sketch, but actually it's not. Have a look at the tagged blouse, the darts, the waistband, the pin tags, there is nothing complicated here. Next, I need to tag the shoulder seams. When they are ready, I'll move on to making a collar. I like showing you new, interesting designs and techniques. На дворе 21 век, надо уходить. I'm taking the shoulder seams. Have a look at the sketch once again. Notice that the collar starts not at the point where the front neckline ends, but higher, somewhere in between that point and the shoulder seam. You can make a collar of any shape you want. It can start right in this point. You can make a shawl collar which goes up from the waist. I've already showed you a lot of different types of the collars. Use your imagination. I want the collar to look exactly like the one in the sketch. First, I need to mark the lower point of the collar in the blouse. The collar will go up from this point. I'm going to show you how to make it. I need to make a pattern for the collar. I'm drawing the line which is even to the distance between the drawn mark and the shoulder seam. Have a look here. This line copies the distance between the shoulder seam and the mark on the neckline. Notice that the line is slightly round. It can be even more round in your case. Just copy the line from the garment. Next, I need to draw one more line up from the shoulder seam. It should be even to the back neckline. This line is going to be changed. Have a look here once again. I remind you that this line copies the distance between the shoulder seam and the marked point. I need to mirror it. The line I'm drawing now mirrors the original one. I remind you that this line is straight. It should be drawn in the same direction as this line further from this point. Видите, да? 
These are the shoulder seam, the center back, and the beginning of the collar. Let's have a look at the points once again. The beginning of the collar, the shoulder seam, the center back. These lines copies the distance between the shoulder seam and the mark in the front neckline. This line mirrors the original one. Further from this point, the line was drawn in the same direction. This angle should be straight. This line should be about 7 cm long. Don't make colors too wide on the center back. They are not comfortable in this case. You can draw this angle of any shape you want. I want it to look this way. That's it. The pattern for the color is ready. These two angles are right. I remind you that this is the shoulder seam. Make this edge a bit round on this level, at least for about 2 mm. This part of the collar can be made of any shape you want. It could be round, it could be square, it could be bigger. This is how it is going to look like in my blouse. I want you to understand that the fact that my collar looks this way doesn't mean that yours have to be the same. I need to cut the pattern for the collar. When I do it, I'll cut the collar of fabric. There is one more detail I want to pay your attention to. This is how the pattern for the collar looks like. This is the center back and the shoulder seam. Watch what I'm doing. I need to make a couple of cuts in the outer edge of the collar. Each of them should be open for about 3 or 4 millimeters. Have a look at the shape of the collar when I fix the openings with the sticky tape. I can start cutting the collar. When I do it, I'll take it to the blouse. I show you the most simple ways of work. Have a close look at the collar once again. I made several cuts in the outer edge of the collar and opened each of them for about 3 or 4 millimeters. Notice that the other edge wasn't cut. It was done for the collar to fit me better at the back neckline. I can start cutting now. Have a look here. Notice that I don't add the seam extension to the outer edge of the collar. I don't need to do it because I'm making a mock-up. You don't need to add the seam extension to the outer edge of the collars when making mock-ups. Add just about 7 mm to the inner edge. As I've already said, I show you the most simple sewing techniques. Do not forget to make a notch in the center back. This is how the collar looks like now. I like it. Next, I need to pin the center back of the collar to the center back of the blouse. This notch marks the beginning of the collar. I can start taking it now. When I take it, I'll try the blouse on. Finally. I've been waiting for it for quite a long time. Have a close look at the way the collar matches the garment. It's absolutely perfect. If you work accurately, you won't have any problems when inserting the collar.
The color is stacked. This is how it looks like now. I want the ballot to be 65 or 70 centimeters long, 50 centimeters here, and 15 centimeters more. I'll even add about 5 more centimeters. Have a look here. The beginning of the bow should be 6 centimeters wide. I remind you that the waistband in the blouse is 5 centimeters wide. I'm cutting a 6 centimeter wide bow for it to be 5 centimeters wide when it's ready. I want the ends of the bow to be 9 cm wide. I'll show you the details when I cut them. I want the bow to be wide at the ends. There are no special rules for making bows. You can make them of any shape and length you want. Guys, I want you to understand that we can sew and wear anything we want. I also want the ends of the bow to be biased. I don't want them to be too wide, though. What is important is that this part of the bow should be of the same width as the waistband when it's stitched. I'll show you the bow when I finish cutting it. I know that you can't wait to see it either. I cut the two details for the bow. They are folded in half. The details are 6 cm wide at the beginning and 9 cm wide at the end. The ends do not necessarily have to be biased. It's up to you. I'm going to take the details this way. When I take the bow, I'll try the blouse on. I can't wait for it. I'm wearing the tagged blouse. I remind you that I haven't even doubled any of the details. Anyway, the blouse looks pretty good this way. Have a look at the way the darts fit me. The dropped shoulders look pretty good. The collar is also perfect. It can be made even lower. I like it the way it is. When the collar is doubled, stitched and ironed, it will look much better. The bow looks absolutely amazing. The pin tags are also very beautiful. Have a look at the back. Let's have a close look at the armholes. You can see that they're perfect. They are not too small or too big. I showed you how to draw the armholes in the original mock-up. I haven't changed anything off the camera. Now you know how to make such blouses on the basis of the patterns for the garments with the drop shoulders. I'm going to show you some more designs which can be applied to this pattern. As I always say, knowing all the needed sewing techniques is what can help us be different and beautiful. It also allows us sewing the high-quality garments. Do not rely on anyone but yourselves. 
Do you remember how these details looked like in the sketch? There was an opening here at the bottom. There's no opening in the blouse. I like it better this way. Let's have a close look at the bow. One detail is attached to the side seam, and the other one to this edge. There will be a tiny button here on the wrong side. Have a look at the waistband. The bow is very beautiful. You do not necessarily have to make a bow. A knot would be enough. These details can be made as long as you want. Learn to work with the darts. I've already showed you how to move them and how to divide them into parts. Due to the fact that I divided the dart in two, the dart tops are not too sharp. You do not necessarily have to place the darts beside each other. You can move them however you want. Use your imagination and don't be afraid of experiments. Remember that practice makes perfect. That's all for today. Be different and beautiful. I'm working really hard to help you. My name is Pauk Štirina. Subscribe to my channel, write comments, share videos, press the like and the bell buttons. I would really appreciate your support. Thank you. Goodbye.